So in the previous video, we were talking about uh, the difference between measured numbers and exact numbers. And one of the things that I mentioned is that measured numbers are not perfectly precise. And I want to um, sort of go over that in slightly more detail using an example of a scale or something that's going to measure how much you weigh. Um, again, pretend in some fantasy world that I actually weigh somewhere in the neighborhood of 128 pounds. So let's say that this is, uh, we're talking about a scale called scale A, and let's pretend that this is scale A, and scale A says that you weigh, uh, that I weigh 128 pounds. So probably I don't weigh exactly 128 pounds, I might weigh 128.2, I might weigh 127.9, but this scale is only good down to the ones place as far as its ability to measure my weight. What this scale is basically saying is I know that you weigh more than 127 and I know that you weigh less than 129 so I'm gonna call it 128 but where you are with respect to 128 I'm not exactly sure. You could have a different scale. You could have a more precise scale called scale B. So here we're gonna have scale B and in this case Maybe it says that I weigh 128.2 pounds. Even scale B is not perfectly precise. Scale B is basically saying, look, I know that you weigh more than 128.1, and I know that you weigh less than 128.3. So I'm going to call it 128.2. But where exactly you are with respect to 128.2, I'm not exactly sure. That's as good as I know. I know down to the tenths place. So this is the tenths place. <clears throat> excuse me, um, and then pretend you have a much more precise scale, scale C, and it knows how much I weigh down to many, many uh, digits past the decimal point. Even this scale is not perfectly precise. It just knows uh, down to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven uh, digits past the decimal place how much I weigh, but it, it is conceivable that there are other digits um, after that last two, and that's why I'm putting those question marks there, there are other, there are, uh, possibly other digits that contribute to my exact weight that even scale C doesn't, uh, isn't capable of figuring out. So again, whenever you make a measurement, um, a lot of times the, the, well, almost all of the time, the measurement is not perfectly precise. This is true even if I have zeros at the end. Scale A, pretend I, I have, uh, I'm weighing someone else and that person weighs 135 pounds. Scale A only measures down to the ones place. So scale A is saying, I know you weigh more than 134, less than 136. And scale B, you might think that it's uh, measuring with the same precision as scale A, but it isn't. It has a point zero at the end. And in math class, what they tell you is 135 and 135.0 are the same thing. <clears throat> what I'm going to tell you is that that's not necessarily true when you're making a measurement. All you really know with 135.0 is that you weigh more than 134.9 and you weigh less than 135.1. And so the scale is calling it 135.0, um, but there may be other numbers, other digits, hidden after the zero that your scale just is not good enough to detect and it just so happened that it got lucky that it landed on the zero. So it looks like it's exactly the same as 135, but scale B is measuring more precisely, but it's still not measuring perfectly precisely. And then scale C, um, again, it is saying, it's saying I know how much you weigh down to the second uh, digit past the decimal place, but after that I don't know. So it could be that even with scale C that you weigh 135.003 uh, pounds, something like that. But the scale was not good enough to figure out the third digit past the decimal place. So you have to realize that even when you see numbers uh, with uh, 0 .0 or 0 .00, um, and they're measured numbers, those, those measurements are still not perfectly precise. All right. Um, there is a way of describing 
describing how precise a measured number is. It is one, this is one way of describing, I should say. Um, and this, uh, this way that we're going to talk about in a fair amount of detail is called significant digits. I want to mention that there are other ways. Students typically uh, hate the significant digits section, and I kind of hate it too. Um, there are other ways that are used, um, at least in beginning chemistry courses, uh, a lot of times the, the course makes you feel as though significant digits is used constantly and, and all the time. And that, that's not really true, but unfortunately I have to teach you something and this is kind of the standard thing that gets taught. So settle in, um, get some popcorn, uh, I don't know, maybe in some beer. So here we go. Uh, significant digits are a way of describing how precise a measurement is. So the way that you do it, and this isn't going to make complete sense until we get to the end, is you take all of the digits in your number and you break them into two groups. You break them into group in to digits that are called significant and the other group is the digits that are not significant. And then what you do is you count the number of digits that are in the significant group. And the idea is that if you have a lot of, uh, if your measurement has a lot of digits that are significant, that it means that your measurement was very precise compared to another measurement that has less uh, or fewer significant digits. And <clears throat> that's basically the punchline. I, I imagine that this doesn't make much sense um, at the moment, but uh, with some examples it probably will. Let's see. So this is how to count how many significant digits you have in your number. So you look at each digit in a measured number. This is a measured number. It's 309 meters. That 309 is the number. Meters is the unit. We had to use some kind of ruler to measure 309 meters. So we have to look at each digit. We have to look at the 3, the 0, the 9. And the idea is a digit, here, here come the rules, the digit is significant if it's not a zero. In other words, if it's one, two, three, four, etc., up to nine. So we can already look at three, zero, nine. Is the three significant? Um, you should all be screaming yes, because it's not a zero. Is the nine significant? You should all be screaming yes, because it is also not a zero. Then the question is, is the zero significant? If you're saying no, um, at least at the moment, what I will tell you is that we don't know. I didn't say, I said if it's not a zero, it's definitely significant. If it is a zero, the, here's where the problem is. Sometimes it might be, sometimes it might not be. We have to wait for more rules. So this is a question mark. So right now, 309 meters has at least two significant digits, maybe three, because we don't know if the zero is considered significant yet. Um, here's another rule. A digit is significant if it's a zero and it's in between digits that are already significant. Now we can answer the question about whether this zero is significant. Is it significant? Uh, you should all be screaming yes because it's a zero and it's sandwiched in between a three and a nine which are already considered significant so that a zero in 309 meters is significant. So we now know that 309 meters has, not maybe, definitely three significant digits. So there's two of the rules. If you're not a zero, if you're a digit that's not a zero, you're significant. If you're a digit that is a zero and you're in between digits that are already significant, you're all you're all also significant. Here's another rule about the zeros. Um, if a zero comes at the end of a number and I'll explain what I mean by end in a minute, and the number contains a decimal. What I mean by that is somebody actually bothered to write the decimal point into the number, then the zero at the end is considered significant. So here, the number 300, I'm going to write it up here, 300, it has a zero at the end, there it is. Um, you have to ask yourself the second question, did somebody actually bother to write a decimal point um, somewhere in that number? The answer is no. There's a decimal point implied to be somewhere, but it's not written. And so this is basically code for saying this zero right here, not significant. Um, and so if we go through this number, um, basically the three is significant. 
and these two zeros are not. So if I write the number 300 without writing a decimal, uh, decimal point, then this number has one significant digit. And what that is telling you, that is basically a code that tells people that if I measured something and it came out 300 without a decimal point, that my measurement was kind of crappy. Suppose that I measured something and I said it was 300 meters. Maybe from my, uh, from where I'm sitting to uh, my car is 300 meters, but I didn't write the decimal point. What that is telling people is that the ruler was so crappy that was used to make that measurement that all it really knows is that my uh, my car is more than 200 meters away but less than 400 meters away. In other words, what it's saying is I only know down to the hundreds place. Um, that's only how that's how good my measurement is. I don't know the tens place and I don't know the ones place. Now, if you look at the second number, it looks almost identical except it says 300 with a decimal point at the end. So here, I would say that the zero comes at the end, or maybe a better way of saying that is it's the zero is the last digit, and did somebody bother to write a decimal point? Um, excuse me. You bet your ass they did. It's sitting right there at the end. And so because of that, this, uh, this last zero is significant, or it's considered significant. And so the 3 is significant, the last 0 is significant, and according to the previous rule, if there's a 0 in between digits that are already considered significant, then it's significant as well. So if I write 300 with a decimal point at the end, my measurement has 3 significant digits, which means that it is more precise than if I just write 300 without the decimal point. What the decimal point is telling people is that I know my measurement was good enough um, uh, to be uh, precise down to the ones place. Or what it's saying is my measurement was so good that it knows that the distance to my car is more than 299 meters and less than 301 meters. So a lot of times um, students are looking for a, a little bit extra meaning in these rules. The way that I would think about these rules is they are like a code for people who have been taught the rules. If I have, if I write 300 without a decimal point, that is a code to people who have been taught the rules that my measurement is only good to the hundreds place. If I write 300 with a decimal point, that is also a code. It's a tip off to people in the know that my measurement knows the hundreds place, it knows the tens place, and it also knows the ones place. This is just like a little clue to people. Um, again, a couple more examples. 300.00. Now, again, in math class, when they're uh, talking about very abstract things, uh, a lot of times your math teacher will tell you that 300 and 300.00 are the same thing. When you're making a measurement, that's not necessarily true. 300.00. Is the 3 significant? Yes. Um, here's a 0 that is the last digit, there it is. Did somebody bother to write a decimal point somewhere in this number? Yes, there it is. Because there's a zero that is the last digit and there's a decimal point written, this last zero is also significant. And by the second rule, by this rule, um, the other zeros that are in between they are also considered significant because the 3 is considered significant and the last 0 is considered significant. So if I write 300.00 as part of my measurement, that measurement has 5 significant digits. What that means is it's much more precise than just writing 300 with no decimal point. 300.00 says that I know that whatever it is that I'm measuring is more than 299.99 and it's less than 300.01. So the, the idea here is that five significant digits for 300.00 compared to one significant digit for just plain old 300 with no decimal point, you can see just by counting the significant digits which one is more precise? Which one is a more precise measurement? The one with more significant digits. Same thing here, 309.5900. This zero is the last digit, and somebody bothered to write a decimal point. So 309.5900 has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven significant digits.
So those are some of the rules for uh, determining whether a digit in a measurement is significant. All right, so on the previous slide, we were talking about rules uh, for figuring out when a digit was significant. Here are some rules for figuring out when a digit is not significant. So not. Um, this is only going to deal with zeros because uh, if you're not, if you're a digit that's not a zero, you're definitely going to be significant. Um, here's the first rule. If you have a zero that's part of the beginning of a decimal number, then the, the zero is not significant. So as an example, if I make a measurement and I say that I measured something and it's 0.0, .0 uh, 393 meters long, um, these zeros that come at the beginning or the front, not significant. Um, this 3 definitely is, this 9 definitely is, and this other 3 definitely is. So if I make a measurement and it's 0 0.0393 meters long, something that I measured. Um, this measurement only has three significant digits. Um, however, just a slight variation on this. If I write and I measure something and the measurement comes out to be 10.00393 meters, then these zeros no longer come at the beginning. They don't come at the front of the number anymore because the one is coming at the front. And so now this measurement, 10.0393, has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 significant digits. So I want you to realize that the, uh, the slight difference. Now, every once in a while, a student sort of, and, and this, I understand the confusion here. They sit there and they say, well, look, those zeros come at the front, um, and it sure seems like they ought to be significant, or at least the one after the decimal place seems like it ought to be significant. So right, 0 0.0393 meters, certainly this guy, um, the second zero here. Why isn't it significant? I need it there because if it wasn't there, uh, the three, the nine, and the three would slip over to the left and I would get the wrong answer. So, right, isn't it significant? It's not considered significant. Um, the reason it's not considered significant is that all I have to do is change the units and I can make those zeros disappear. So instead of saying 0 0.0393 meters, what if I converted this uh, number to centimeters? If I did that, because there are 100 centimeters in a meter, um, and I rewrote the measurement, just I didn't change anything. All I changed was the units. I didn't change the measurement at all. Um, and if I change the units to centimeters, my measurement would be 3.93 centimeters. All of a sudden you realize that those zeros are no longer there. Um, because they're no longer there, these zeros are have like a little bit of a fancy name. They're called placeholders. They're holding the place of the 3, the 9, and the 3 just because of the unit that we're using. Basically, you can think of it as we're not quite using the most appropriate unit. It would be better if we switched units to centimeters, and when we do, those front zeros disappear. Um, and because they're just placeholders, they are considered to be not contributing to describing the precision of the number, and those zeros are considered to be not significant. So when I say 3.93, uh, these are the only three digits there, and I have three significant digits. So this is a long-winded way of saying that the front zeros in a number, in a measured number, are, uh, if they come at the very front, they're considered not significant. Over here, with 10.0393 meters, there is no way that I can switch the units and get rid of my zeros. I can't go to centimeters, or I could go to centimeters, but then that would be 1,003.93 uh, centimeters. Zeros are still there. I'm stuck with them. Can't get rid of them. I can go in the other direction. I'm still stuck with the zeros. Because those zeros are in the middle now, I can switch the units all I want, but they're never going to go away, and I need them to, uh, to basically tell me the complete precision of my measurements. So in that case, they're significant. But if you can just switch the units and make the zeros go away, and that will only happen if they come in the front, then your, uh, your front zeros are considered not significant. And last but not least, the last rule for uh, zeros not being significant. Basically, if the zero is the last digit 
and you did not bother to write a decimal. And the example that I gave in the previous slide was 300 without a decimal. Um, here it is basically 500 without a decimal. That is saying that number has only one one significant digit. Sometimes people call significant digits significant figures. So they're kind of used interchangeably. So if you see that, that's what they mean. And again, 500, no decimal point, uh, one significant digit. And what it is telling you, it is a big tip off that the ruler that you used was only good to the hundreds place. If you measured something that was 500 meters long and you wrote no decimal point, you're basically saying my ruler was so crappy that it could only tell that my distance was more than 400 meters and less than 600. So I'm going to call it 500, but I don't really know that for sure. It could be 525 for all I know. So uh, what's the purpose of significant digits? It is a way. It is not the only way of describing how precise a measurement is. In fact, as I uh, mentioned earlier, um, there are other ways that are actually more commonly used in the lab, but they are a little bit uh, more math intensive and there, there's a little bit more theory behind them. So for whatever reason, um, this one is the one that gets taught to beginning chemistry students over and over again, and it causes a certain amount of pain. Let's see. So it's a way of describing how precise a measurement is. Imagine that you have two different devices, two rulers to measure the length of your computer screen. So here's my computer screen. And I've got one ruler. I'm measuring the diagonal, and ruler number one says that uh, the diagonal on my computer screen is 34 centimeters. Ruler number two says it's 33.8. I know that you can just look at this and tell intuitively which one is more precise. It's this one. But if you want to do it in the sense of um, counting significant digits, ruler the measurement that came from ruler number one has only two significant digits. And the measurement that came from ruler number two has three significant digits. Excuse me. And so ruler number two gives a more precise measurement. There's one more uh, rule about significant digits or counting uh, significant digits in a measured number that I want to talk about before we move on to a little bit more detailed information about significant digits. And here's the setup for explaining the rule. I told you earlier that if I write the number 300, if I say I took a measurement and something was 300 meters long, and I actually bothered to put the decimal point in, I said that there, that number um, with the decimal point has three significant digits. And the reason was that the rule was if your last digit is a zero, and it is, and somebody bothered to write the decimal point, then the last digit, that zero, is significant. And the three is significant because it's not a zero. And then this middle zero is also significant because it's in between digits uh, that are already considered significant. So that measurement has three significant digits. Um, so what this is telling you is whatever ruler you used, it is good to the, excuse me, to the ones place. That's how, that's how well it measures. Um, what I want to ask now uh, to, to introduce the rule is what happens when you actually have a measured number that doesn't uh, measure, let's say, to the ones place. Maybe it's only good enough to measure to the tens place. In other words, uh, and I happen to get a measurement that ends with two zeros. So the three is definitely significant. Um, but this only the second zero, only the one that I highlighted in red here, um, is significant as well because this ruler is a little bit worse than the, the one I was mentioning up above. This ruler over here that gave us, uh, that also measured 300 meters, um, is only good to the tens place. So that's as, as good as it can measure. It can measure to the tens of meters. And it just so happens that when we measured some distance, um, the, the tens place ended up being a zero. But this zero, actually, we want to tell people that it is significant. It's, uh, it's part of the precision of the ruler. This one, the third, uh, or the third digit, or the second zero, third digit is not significant. So in this case, this number, we, we want to tell people that it only has two significant digits the hundreds place 
and the tens place, and the ones place isn't uh, uh, is not significant. So, um, how do we actually do that? Uh, one way would actually be to just color um, the digits that are significant, and that that would be a reasonable tip off. The way that it's typically done, um, unfortunately, because coloring is a little bit problematic, um, is people use scientific notation. And if you wanted to write this number and tell people that it only has two significant digits, you would write it like this. You would write 3.0, and if you'll notice, the coefficient, can I spell coefficient? Maybe. Um, the coefficient has two digits. And we wrote 3.0 times 10 to the 2 meters. This is a scientific notation way of saying 300 meters. But for people who have been taught this rule, what it is also saying is that um, whatever the measurement is, it's known to two significant digits. So when a number is written, the, the punchline here is that when a number is written in scientific notation, the, the number of digits that are written in the coefficient equals the number of significant digits. So uh, if I write 3 times 10 to the 2 meters, this is a way of saying 300 meters. But it's also a way of saying only the first digit is significant because I only have one digit here. If I write 3.0 times 10 to the 2 meters, that is a way of also saying 300 meters, but what it's saying is whatever measurement was used to, to make the second measurement, it has two significant digits. It knows the hundreds place and it knows the tens place. I, I suppose I could do this as well. I could write 3.00 times 10 to the 2 meters. That is another way of saying 300 meters as well, but what this one uh, does is it there are three digits written in the coefficient so what it's telling you is all three digits in 300 meters are significant so one significant digit two significant digits three significant digits um, let's go back so uh, again just to emphasize if you see a number written in scientific notation uh, and you want to count the number of significant digits what you do is you look at the coefficient and you count the number of of digits shown there the number of digits in the coefficient will equal uh, the number of significant digits in that measurement.